Hello, good afternoon. Uh, uh, we have the privilege to uh, have with us uh, Professor uh, Peter Cohen from Babson College and uh, a, a serial entrepreneur, an investor himself, an entrepreneur in a teaching entrepreneurship and leader of uh, different um, uh, lines of uh, thinking about entrepreneurship, which, uh, who is uh, visiting us to participate in our International Week. But today, this afternoon, it is a very special afternoon because we uh, would like Professor Cohen to explain and discuss with us which are the six elements or the elements, the most important elements to generate what he has uh, nominated as the Startup Common. Good afternoon, Professor Cohen. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being with us. Please, what are the elements, do you think, uh, sh should be required on an ecosystem to become what you call a startup common? Well, there are six elements, as I mentioned. Um, the most interesting one to me is the values uh, of a particular region or a city. Um, to give you an example, I did about 50 interviews of people all over the world, many of them Silicon Valley, and I identified the values of Silicon Valley, which I see as sort of a, a benchmark against which other uh, areas can compare themselves. And there are three critical values that they have in Silicon Valley. The first one is the idea of giving back to other people within the uh, startup community without expecting an immediate return. The second one is to take a risk and take a bet um, on disrupting a big existing market. And the third one is intellectual humility. That is the willingness to learn new things even though you've accomplished a great deal in your life to always be open to learning new things. So I think that is one of the most interesting uh, of the six key elements of a startup common is the values. And without the values, it's hard to have the other five. Oh, I see. Uh, interesting. Uh, we are talking about giving back without expecting a reward, a short-term reward in one of the most richest parts of the world. Exactly. How did it come and that, from? That's very surprising because the reason that they feel that way is because they have a philosophy of abundance. The idea that they're creating so much wealth and creating so much opportunity that if they give back to somebody who is a member of their startup common, that eventually, in some way, that will return to them. And for example, uh, they might be helping somebody out who's a young entrepreneur now, and then maybe three years from now, they'll be the CEO of the next Facebook. Oh, I'll see. And as a result, they may be able to uh, reap some rewards from that, but they're not concerned about it because many of them have already been so successful already, and they just feel that any additional uh, success, success that they have is just gravy and they just feel wonderful about being able so, to help other so people. So it's a free distribution of, of talent around, so it's uh, an atmosphere of talent being given. In talent, in talent being given, um, help being given to others uh, and that sort of leads to the second key element uh, of the startup common which, which is mentorship. Oh, I see. And there are two kinds of mentorship. There's corporate mentorship which is people who know a lot about starting up companies helping young entrepreneurs to solve their business problems in many, many different categories of things. For instance, there's help um, with raising capital. Um, how do you raise capital from a venture capital firm? There's help in hiring and firing people and designing your organization structure. There's help in figuring out what your business model should be and what are the major trends that you should be focusing on. There's help with deciding how to design your product so that customers will want to use it. There's help with finding customers and partners. There's all different kinds of help that's available at the corporate level. And there's also individual mentoring where very talented young professionals uh, seek help from more experienced people who can help them to figure out how can they develop from being a technical person or an engineer into perhaps the CEO of a startup company. Oh, I see. And then you, you, you mentioned that the, uh, perhaps after that the, the most important thing would be investors. How do you uh, create investors? How do you uh, find investors? How is the, mm, the accessibility of money uh, for funding the, the new project is, is, is there around in a startup common? Yes, in the startup common, um, what you need to have are different kinds of capital for different stages in the development um, of a startup. So for example, a startup at the beginning, uh, if it's running properly, what it needs to do is take its technology and connect that technology to a customer who's willing to buy that technology because it solves a problem that they have. To finance that stage of development, it's often best to uh, use your own money, founder's capital, uh, or to use what's called sweat equity, which is another way of saying you work without getting paid. Uh, because if you can show that you have customers, 
then you can go to the next level of capital raising, which might be used to hire a sales force to say, I've sold to one or two customers without a sales force. Now I want to build up uh, all the customers in a particular industry or a particular region. Uh, and, and for that, you need uh, angel capital. Uh, angels are individuals who are wealthy, who have been successful from previous investments, and now want to, to invest in startup companies. And then if you reach the stage where maybe you've sold all the customers within a particular market segment or, or industry and you want to expand into new countries or expand your product line, that's the point at which you might want to raise venture capital, which is sort of the highest form of capital, but also in many ways the most dangerous if you're trying to maintain control uh, of your venture. But in order for a startup common to function effectively, it needs all those different kinds of capital. Oh, I see. Uh, having, having, having done all the research you have done to write your book, The Hungry Startup, yes. which you are the author, uh, uh, how have you encountered the, uh, the attitude of the entrepreneurs in front of the investors? Well, the interesting thing about that is that many entrepreneurs are reluctant to sell shares in their company to outside investors unless there is an alignment between the entrepreneur's vision for the company and the venture capitalist's vision for the company. And also, uh, many, many of the uh, startups that I've talked to, the, the CEOs that I've talked to, uh, and I, I probably spoke to about 170 or 180 uh, in the last two years, they really want what they call value added from these investors, which means that they believe that the investors will not only write a check, but they will also help their uh, business to grow through advice. So the um, venture capitalists are not only capital providers, but they're also mentors. Oh. And can, can a, uh, entrepreneurs find finance, for example, in, in big companies or uh, interesting companies? Or? Yes, uh, there, are, there are big companies, um, and, that, and that leads to another element of the startup common, which is pillar companies. Okay. Uh, pillar companies are big companies that are located in a particular region or a city. Um, for example, if you look at Silicon Valley, there are companies like Google, Oracle, Cisco, uh, Apple. These are companies that can provide three things to a startup. One thing they can provide, as you mentioned, is the capital. They can provide, for instance, Google has Google Ventures. Uh, other companies have a venture capital arms where they will actually invest in a startup company. Uh, they also provide uh, talent uh, for startups. And sometimes they provide even the startup idea because a company like Google will uh, be working on a problem. And the problem is something that um, is not important enough to the company for them to pursue it as a business because they don't see it as a big enough market opportunity. However, what happens is that these talented people see this business opportunity, they realize that that might be too big for Google, but just the right size for a startup. So they leave the startup and they go, uh, they leave the company and they go work for, uh, for a startup that they create based on that problem. And then Google ultimately may even acquire that company at the end. So um, those are all very b beneficial aspects of... of so there activity. is some sort of entrepreneurship as well, entrepreneurial acti ac exactly. activity. Exactly. This is the way that um, Google can uh, maintain uh, access to the talent and to the intellectual property, uh, but by g letting the uh, technology get developed into a product in a business through a startup, they're able to um, have a more efficient way of doing R&D and product development than trying to do it all internally. Great. Great. So all of this is, is confirming what you call the, the startup common. What is the concept into, in, behind the holistically? The holistically, the, the original concept for the startup common um, starts with the uh, idea of the tragedy of the commons, um, which um, my understanding of it was that the story is that back in the Middle Ages in Britain, um, there were these fields of grass in the middle of a town. And there were farmers who had you know, cows and goats and other animals that they would bring to the center of the town to feed on the grass. And if all the farmers and all the cows and all the goats ate just the right amount of grass, then it would grow back the next year. And they'd be able to bring their cattle and their animals I back see. every year. Um, but what, what happened sometimes was that one or two of the farmer's animals would eat too much. And then the common would die. That grass would not come back the next year and the whole village would fall apart because there was no place for their animals. To so raise. to some extent they compete, but at the same time they take care of the community. So the so. concept behind the startup common is that within a particular region uh, or, or a city or, or a collection of cities, um, there is a common that consists of these six elements 
that are the resources that startups need. Um, you have startups that um, are unfunded, that are looking for funding. And they go to the startup common seeking capital and advice in order to build up the startup. If there's 100 or 1,000 startups seeking capital, maybe only 20 or, or 200 of them will get financing. And of the ones that do get financing, maybe one will be successful and the other 19 will fail. But the one that's successful will feed its resources back into the startup common. Those resources are both capital and Science. resources and, now, and knowledge. And the ones that fail will be composted. They will be broken down into their components and the other companies will buy their successful product lines and hire their good people and it will be a way of feeding the resources back into the startup common. So as long as the resources going into a startup common are greater than the resources being used by it, it will still be there for subsequent generations of startups. I see. So the successful ones are financing the new ones and the failing ones are teaching the, the, the new ones how not to do things or how yes, to... Yes, that's another thing that they're adding to the startup common is insight into how to avoid failure. Yeah. And they're also providing a product lines that may not be fully developed but are still useful and also people, the talented people that work... So failure is an asset. No, failure no. can be composted and turned into something Composed. that's valuable to the startup common. Okay, thank you. Do you think then, uh, as we are planning to, to, to uh, challenge today, do you think, uh, have, you, have you perceived that in Barcelona, do we have enough what it takes to become a, a, a startup common? Do you think the atmosphere is? Or perhaps we will find it out this afternoon. Uh, perhaps we will find out this afternoon. But my hunch is that it has some of the elements, which is good. Uh, but it probably needs to add some other elements. Okay. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank, Thank you, you Manuel. Thank you. Gracias.